Quite remarkably, veganism is labeled as being a symptom of a leftist, woke, snowflake generation, and is also racist, ableist, and anti-indigenous and colonialist all at the same time. In other words, veganism is one of the few issues which could unite the staunchest leftist and the staunchest Trump supporter. For all of their differences, they could find unity and camaraderie in their mutual dislike for people who are trying to help animals. So I thought I would explore these issues in separate videos, starting with today's video, which is looking at the accusation that at this point, being a white vegan is practically intrinsically racist. Or at least that's what this Medium article by Juliana Yazbek states. And while I wish this was just a case of cherry picking, the idea that veganism is racist or only for white people is sadly not confined to this one article. Hey everyone, I am hosting an exclusive live and interactive workshop called the How to Argue with a Meat Eater in 2024 workshop, and it's taking place on the 6th of January. It's all about how to have highly effective and impactful conversations with your non-vegan friends, family members, and work colleagues, and we'll leave you with the skills and techniques that you can use to inspire positive change within your social and family circles in 2024, and of course, beyond. The workshop is exclusively for everyone who pre-orders a copy of my new book, How to Argue with a Meat Eater and Win Every Time, which has been published on December 28th. Now, if you haven't heard about my new book yet, then watch the video that's popping up in the top corner now. The workshop is designed to complement the book and allows us to dive even deeper into some of the ideas contained within it, all with the intention of setting you up for 2024 and beyond, meaning you'll feel more confident and capable when taking on any anti-vegan arguments that are thrown at you throughout Veganuary and the rest of the year. There will also be a Q&A, meaning that you can ask me questions too, and we can go through things that you personally struggle with or want some more information about. So through the workshop, you'll hear me talk about how I approach conversations, what tips and techniques I have found to be completely invaluable and helpful for me over the years, and what evidence-based research can teach us about having more effective conversations. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and demoralized when we have to defend ourselves and face so many arguments. However, conversations about veganism, they don't have to be this way, meaning that we can have productive conversations that are not only impactful, but can actually make us feel happy and empowered as well. So armed with my new book and this workshop, you'll learn practical and easy to implement skills that will help you in all of your future conversations. So to sign up to this exclusive workshop, then make sure to pre-order a copy of the book now, and then click the link in the description below to find out more about the workshop and how to sign up. If you've already pre-ordered a copy, then thank you so, so much. And you can sign up to the workshop now by clicking at the link in my description too. I am so excited for this workshop and I cannot wait to speak to all of you on the 6th of January. So is being white and vegan racist? Let's dive into these arguments and try and understand why someone might make these claims. Well, aside from the fact that it gives white people who want to continue eating animal products an excuse to continue to do so, but under the guise and facade of racial and social justice, a lot of it comes from a misunderstanding of certain agricultural realities, holding veganism to an unfair and impossible standard, or just ingrained speciesist and demeaning attitudes towards non-human animals. So what do I mean by a misunderstanding of certain agricultural practices? Well, one of the main arguments used is that people of color can be exploited in the production of crops. Now, this is true, although in the UK where I am, it's more likely to be Eastern Europeans whose labor is used and who are more commonly white. So what happens to this argument when it's white people who are working on the farms? Is being a white vegan still practically intrinsically racist when it's a Romanian person, for example, picking strawberries. But perhaps most importantly for this argument, what about crop farming for animal feeds? And what about animal farms? Are people of color only exploited on crop farms where plants are being grown for human consumption, but are then treated wonderfully on animal feed farms and the animal farms themselves? Do workers on apple farms think to themselves, if only I could be growing corn for cows, or better still, mutilating baby piglets and tending to the feces lagoons, then I'd know what equitable and fair working conditions looked like. Plus, workers on animal farms are exposed to bacteria, harmful gases, and potential 
potential viruses like bird flu and swine flu. And it's not just the workers. The air pollution from animal farms also impacts local communities around them, with it estimated that nearly 13,000 people die a year in the USA alone because of their proximity to animal farms. And who are most likely to be impacted by this air pollution? people of color. In fact, a new documentary called The Smell of Money is all about this exact issue. But hey, at least paying for products that poison people of color isn't practically intrinsically racist. And this is what I mean by holding vegans to an unfair and unrealistic standard. If a white person eats animal products, they don't have to read articles saying that they are racist. I was never labeled as being a racist for eating dead animals, but now that I don't, all of a sudden my food choices are racist. Now add to this that globally 83% of all agricultural land is used to produce animal-based foods, meaning only 17% of our global farmland is used to produce plants directly for human consumption. In the US, 10 times more land is used to produce animal-based foods than plant foods directly for human consumption. 10 times more land for the animal farming than the plant farming for humans. Which means that when you look at our agricultural system in its totality and you break down the number of farms and the amount of land used to produce different types of food, well, far more farms and far more land is used to produce animal-based foods. So if we're talking about human exploitation in the production of food, well, there is more human exploitation found within the production of animal-based foods, not just because of the individual practices found within them, but also because of the scale and the huge disparity between animal-based production and plant-based production for humans. Now, let me make one thing clear. Veganism is a movement for non-human animals, but what I and other vegans want is an ethical, equitable, and just food system for everyone, human and non-human, because it's possible to care about multiple problems at the same time. And just because we have a food system that does contain some forms of human exploitation does not mean that non-human animals deserve to be gassed to death or have their throats cut, especially as this argument just presents a false dichotomy. It's not a question of choosing between human suffering and animal suffering, because when you eat animal products, you're choosing for both human and animal suffering. It's also important to note that working on a crop farm doesn't automatically mean that someone is being exploited. For example, in the previously referenced article, one of the crops specifically highlighted is quinoa, with the writer claiming that quinoa has a devastating effect on the price of the plant and the welfare of the farmers and inhabitants on the land and the land itself. Is it only vegans who eat quinoa? Is it only vegans who eat plants grown in the global south? Also, quinoa farmers themselves have challenged this narrative, with one stating that, to me, quinoa Quinoa is absolutely changing the lives of our regional community of people. The Bolivian president even stepped in during the quinoa boom and stated that there had actually been a threefold increase in the domestic consumption of quinoa. Plus, researchers from the University of Minnesota and Towson University in Maryland combed through 10 years worth of data, covering indeed even the few years before quinoa prices increased and the boom itself. And what did they discover? Well, they discovered that there was a rise in living standards and welfare in Peru. Rural Andeans actually benefited the most from the quinoa boom, with it bringing more income to some of the poorest regions, in the words of the researchers who studied this issue. To claim that rising quinoa prices were hurting those who had traditionally produced it and consumed it is patently false. This is a really happy story. The poorest people got the gains. So actually consuming quinoa was helping people of color and telling people that they are practically intrinsically racist for eating quinoa actually hurts people of color. You see, this is the problem with oversimplifying something or viewing issues in reductive and dogmatic ways or in a manner which lacks nuance. This person is making the argument that it would be less racist for me to boycott quinoa, which helps people of color, and instead buy something grown in the UK, which statistically speaking will most likely financially benefit a white person. In fact, they go one step further. They say, if you continue to consume mass-produced vegan products sourced in the global south, your veganism is not only performative, but evil. So buying quinoa, which helps people of color, is actually evil. Instead, you should pay for animals to be slaughtered, because that's peaceful. Other crops are often brought up as well, but saying that chickpeas are bad, or avocados 
are bad is so outrageously simplistic that it just shows a lack of sincere intention and research from the person writing the article. Is it racist to buy avocados from Spain because there are human rights issues in Mexico? Add to that that these issues are not because of white Europeans or white Americans, but instead because of Mexican cartels vying to control the avocado production there. And what about people of color who are exploited in tanneries in Southeast Asia, or people of color who are essentially enslaved and forced to catch prawns? And add to all of this that the farming of animals is one of the leading drivers of the climate crisis, and the world's leading environmental organizations have proven and shown time after time that consuming plants over animals is scientifically and quantifiably the most sustainable choice that we can make when it comes to our food choices. So if we recognize this fact, and we also recognize that the climate crisis is currently disproportionately impacting people of color in the global south more, if we blend these two things together, well, the conclusion we should reach is that consuming plants over animals is beneficial for people of color from a climate crisis perspective because consuming plants over animals reduces our impact on the environment. So really, when we look at it this way, how do we reach the conclusion that consuming animals is the anti-racist position and consuming plants is the racist position? If anything, those two ideas should be reversed. Ultimately, why can't we just accept that we should be working to eradicate both human and non-human suffering and exploitation? Why do we have to constantly demean the plight of non-human animals. And anyway, to address the wider point, as soon as we acknowledge that it's not a simple case of something being inherently bad just because it's produced by a person of color, how does boycotting foods produced by people of color then actually help them. The logic is that if you support what they make for their livelihoods, that makes you racist. So instead, we should stop supporting farmers in the global south, thus destroying their livelihoods to show that we care about them. Now, are there problem crops in areas of the world? Yes. Absolutely. Cocoa is an example of a plant food which can have ethical concerns around it. Now, does that make being white and vegan racist? No. Obviously not. First, because most chocolate is eaten by non-vegans, and second, because it just means that we should opt for ethically produced chocolate. And actually, many vegan chocolate brands make a point of using ethically produced and sourced chocolate. Because when you look at the usage of unethical cocoa, well, what companies are most likely to use this unethical chocolate? Well companies that use dairy. In fact, it's this mass-produced commercial chocolate industry that's driving the unethical production of cocoa across the world. So actually, when you look at the issue behind the unethical production of cocoa farming, well, it's the companies that produce non-vegan products and the non-vegan consumers of those products which are driving that issue the most. So how about instead we just buy vegan ethical chocolate. Which brings me to the next point. The experiences of people of color are not monolithic. The author of the article is making a very oversimplified claim, which is that if someone is a person of color, lives in the global south, and produces plants for humans, they are therefore being exploited and are a victim. But this disregards people of color who produce these plants for their livelihoods and do so consensually and want people to support their production of food. Sadly, this oversimplified claim is actually problematic and dangerous and can cause more harm for the people it's pretending to protect. And maybe now you're thinking to yourself, well, Ed, this is all well and good, but you've overlooked one key detail, which is that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. And because for many of these people, they're producing food in a capitalist system or for a capitalist system, therefore it is inherently exploitative. Well, actually I do address that argument in my new book, which has been published in December. But if you'd like me to make a video specifically about the argument of no ethical consumption under capitalism, then let me know down below in the comments. But one of the biggest issues with the veganism is racist argument is that it minimizes, overlooks, or outright ignores the fact that there are black vegans and vegans of color. This is perfectly proven by the fact that black vegans also eat the same food as white vegans. They also support the same industries. So do people who claim that white vegans are racist or evil for eating these foods also think that it's immoral or evil for black people to partake in the same actions that make being white and vegan immoral and evil? Or have they just minimized the existence of vegans of color to such an extent that they don't even think about them? Polling in the USA actually shows that black people are more likely to give up meat and also to become vegan, with black people making up the fastest growing vegan demographic in the country. Plus, 
When we say that veganism is racist, we're fundamentally saying that caring about animals is racist because veganism is an ethical philosophy. It's not about eating quinoa and avocados. It's about recognizing that non-human animals deserve moral consideration. And while it is obviously and sadly evident that racism does exist and that black people and people of color do experience oppression and discrimination, the societal challenges that people of color and black people face are not diminished in their severity by the acknowledgement that what we do to animals is a moral and ethical issue in its own right. Veganism is an attempt to reduce animal suffering, exploitation, and death. It is a movement that wants to grant non-human animals relevant and applicable rights. And nothing about the aspiration of treating animals with more kindness, dignity, and respect is intrinsically anti-black or racist. Sadly, I've even seen people calling veganism racist because why should we care about animals when racism still exists? But thankfully, as humans, we can care about multiple issues and feel outraged by multiple injustices at the same time. Although I do think it's important to mention that this speaks to how low we think of non-human animals because apparently caring about them and their plight can be viewed as offensive. Portraying veganism as something for white people is a baseless claim to say the least. It harms animals by shifting the focus away from their suffering and encourages people to view veganism as a trend or worse, a barrier to racial justice. It also harms non-white vegans and erases the significant contributions that they have made and continue to make to the cause. And there have been many prominent civil rights and black liberation voices who have also gone vegan and spoken of its importance, including Angela Davis. You know, I usually don't, don't mention that I'm vegan. Uh, <laughs> But that has evolved, I think, and I, and I think it, it, it's the right moment to talk about it uh, because uh, it is, I think, a part of a revolutionary uh, uh, perspective. Uh, how can we not only discover more um, compassionate relations with human beings, but how can we develop compassionate relations with the with the, the other creatures with whom we share this planet. And that would mean challenging, challenging the whole capitalist industrial form of food production. It would mean being aware, driving up the, 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 the interstates and uh, driving down five and uh, you know, down to LA, seeing all of the of uh, the cows uh, on all of the ranches there. You know, most people don't think about the fact that they're eating animals. When they, you know, eat a steak or eat a chicken, most people don't think about the, 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 the horrendous um, suffering that those animals must endure simply in order to become food products to be consumed by human beings. So being white and vegan is not racist. Pain for animals to have their bodies mutilated, to be forcibly impregnated, to have their babies stolen, and to have their throats slit open, or their lungs forcefully filled with CO2 is not a form of racial justice, black liberation, or social justice. In fact, due to the chronic disease risk of eating animal products, as well as the environmental harm and exploitation of humans within the farming and production of animal products, well, the consumption of animals actually stands in the way of human rights and social progression for our own species. And finally, it is often claimed that because vegan products can cost more and because people of color can disproportionately be impacted by poverty the most, veganism is therefore racist because of some of these products costing more than their animal counterparts. However, evidence has shown that in high income nations, a whole foods plant-based diet can actually cut a third off the budget of your food bill. And this also doesn't overlook the fact that there are issues of food accessibility around the world, including in places like the US. However, the failings of our food system to provide accessible and affordable and healthy food to everyone is not the fault of veganism. If people live in food deserts where they're surrounded by fast food chains and cheap processed animal-based foods, that's not the fault of veganism. It's the fault of our broken and unethical food system. And so actually a truly ethical and fixed food system would be a plant-based one because as well as being more ethical for animals, the production of plants is more efficient, 
more economical, meaning we can produce more food at a lower cost and actually increase accessibility of plant foods for everyone. And so the failings of our current food system are not because of veganism, and they're certainly not because of non-human animals. The failings of our current food system are because of our current food system. So overall, what we need is a different food system, a more ethical, an equitable one, and a more just one for humans and non-humans alike. And that food system is a plant-based food system. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed listening to what I have to say about this particular issue, then I highly recommend grabbing a copy of my new book, How to Argue with a Meat Eater and Win Every Time, which has been published next month and is available for pre-ordering now. Because in the book, I not only address this particular argument, but I address all the social and political arguments against veganism, as well as every argument against veganism in general. So if you'd like to learn what my responses to these arguments are, and importantly, how you can respond to these arguments yourself when you have them used against you, because whether we like it or not, veganism will still continue to have these labels thrown upon it, and will still have these accusations thrust upon it if you would like to know how to respond to them. If you're in a situation where these labels and accusations are put against you, then this book will be incredibly helpful and valuable for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, let me know down below in the comments what you thought of what it is that I had to say, and I will see you all in the next video.